Perfect. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Conspiracy or Just a Coincidence. Today, I have an awesome guest, William Ramsey, uh, wrote books on some of the coolest topics there are, Aleister Crowley, West Memphis 3, and much more. So I'm so excited. I love people that write these. I mean, he, you work so hard to do all this stuff. Your knowledge is probably the, better than 95% of the people out there. So, Will, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for the invite. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So first, I mean, what got you into what, cause I know like the work from just doing a podcast takes so much reading and all that stuff. What got you into like writing these books? Well, I think it really came back to nobody else was writing on that subject. So I think that I just was like, well, isn't anybody going to say how important <laughs> this is when it came to that realization really? Is yeah. It? Right. So I was always an independent reader. I kind of knew that the, the, and it's really bad even to this current day, but the corporate media is really doing a lousy job of really yeah. looking into certain subjects. So yeah. um, I think after the whole Bush administration, that's really when I wrote, I was mm -hmm. a 9-11 researcher, really. And once really? I started seeing, yeah. So once I started seeing that kind of, some kind of weird correlations between all these numbers and stuff that like that, that's what led me to read really Crowley, from my own perspective, like read the original source text, not the biographies, nothing okay. that was too sympathetic. Like, cause there's a lot of people who are into that kind of hmm. new worldview. So I did definitely do not have that, but I really right. kind of voraciously tracked down Crowley. And that led me to write wow. my first book, Prophet of Evil. And then when I was writing my second book, uh, Children of the Beast, that's when I kind of came across the West Memphis three. And I kind of just turned, took a, like a, you know, 90 degree turn and uh, yeah, really followed the West Memphis three because it involved so many people that I had seen Johnny Depp and mm. Henry Rollins right. and Peter Jackson. So all of these celebrities that I'd seen around, what are they doing hanging around this guy? And why is the court record so much different than the public record? And you'll see that in a lot of different cases, especially Epstein, who I've been following this Maxwell story, like the in court right. documents aren't the same as the public or the people who are doing the research. So anyway, Crowley, West Memphis Three, Children of the Beast was really Crowley's influence on the 20th century, and then I've so done I guess five. Let's start. Yeah, oh, sorry. Ahead. We we I was gonna say we can start right into Crowley, like his his origin story, or you know whatever you feel that's important. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was born in 1875 in kind of England. He was uh, close to Stratford on Avon, Avon, where Shakespeare okay. was born, supposedly. Right. That's a whole another story. But Crowley, he died, <laughs> Crowley died in 19... I don't think that Shakespeare actually wrote all his uh, plays. I think it was actually I think that's more fair. Yeah. The Invisible College. But anyway, uh, Francis Bacon. Anyway, so he was born. He died in 1947 in Hastings in far southern England. And really, he came from a wealthy brewing family. They were brewers, but they also huh. kind of like uh, provided bars with like snacks and, and sandwiches. So they made money huh. in a lot of different ways. Yeah. But they were from kind of a very rigid christian sect called the they were actually part of darby's group uh the plymouth brethren they were part a subset of that mm. called the exclusive brethren so crowley remembered his childhood as very kind of rigid and religious his father died when he was 12 but crowley was very smart he was able to uh survive their kind of private schools they call them public schools but they were really private schools and state okay. sensitive thing so he survived like real brutal beatings and stuff like that, but mm. made it into Cambridge. And really that's when he really developed three interests, which were poetry, mountain climbing and occultism. And he really never really, he never really had to work. So he really devoted himself kind of like as a member of the upper class of the huh. UK to those three things. He said he was white hot on those subjects. <laughs> so that led him really into the occult. He became kind of associated with a group called the Golden Dawn. He was a member. He hung right. with kind of famous people. So they learned kind of Western esotericism, which borrowed a lot from the East. And Crowley, okay. as kind of a scholar of the occult, really took their ideas, made his own ideas, made his own trips all around the world. He traveled to India twice to go mountain climbing and traveled through what would be Vietnam today and southern China. So he's always picking up all this information, yoga and mm -hmm. Hinduism and things like that. So um, he really created his own religion. I think that was really his goal. And he left, he told people, I'm going to create my own religion. I'm going to overthrow Christianity. And in a hundred years, people will, will be in the sunset of Crowleyanity. So he really had that intent and really his formative or what he says, 
he claims is his most important moment was in 1904 when he was in Cairo, Egypt with his wife, Kelly. Right. And they had this whole, he supposedly received this book called the Book of the Law. And that became his foundational right. text for his whole religion was the Book of the Law. And uh, that was 1904, died in 1947. So he's constantly writing and reading and he wrote uh, fictional literature, uh, oh, text on magic. He wrote for the... the uh, Oh, what's the magazine? Vanity Fair, which is still in existence. So you still see people yeah, writing yeah. Vanity Fair. So he wrote for them in the early 19th, huh. 20th century. Wow. Yeah, so, and under a variety of names, none of his scholars, there's a lot of other uh, people who admire Crowley, but nobody's really made an effort to, to compile all of his different writings and journalism and things like that, that he did to try to get by or make extra money. It's really interesting, but a lot of different, uh, Stuff. If you look at the corpus of his works, it's really uh, voluminous. I mean, but that's what is really wow. what he dedicated himself to was, and he thought he was a master of the English language, and in a lot of ways he was. But not a very nice person, had a lot of terrible yeah. relationships. And, you said earlier that, like, he, you know, people view him positively. I don't, I mean, the, I briefly read about him. Why do you, like, what do you, what do people say positive about Crowley? Well, like, uh, I mean, I think from him, it's like the liberator of humanity. Uh, mm. His idea of freedom would be positive. His idea is that man is God. So you could be your kind mm. of own independent person creating your own life. So you, you weren't tied right. to Christianity or anything like that. And also kind of free love and drugs. So a lot of people were attracted okay. to that idea. And I think that his ideas were very important to people like Timothy Leary and really the 60s right. in general, there okay. was definitely a, a correlation between that kind of social upheaval and Crowley's ideas. If you read right. my book, Children of the Beast, it's clear Le Leary thought that he was kind of carrying on the Crowleyan tradition and said as really? much. Really? Yeah. And there was weird kind of correlations. He said that he, they, he called them synchronous elements because they were both mm -hmm. in Algeria. And uh, so wow. Leary, yeah. So Leary had to flee the United States. He ended up in Tunisia. He traveled to Algeria, northern uh, after, Africa. After like that, after his like acid and all that stuff. Yeah. So it was, I think okay. it was like sixty-eight or sixty-nine. He got huh, tired. I didn't know yeah. he had to leave. Yeah. No. He he was actually broken out of jail. Leary was in California. No way. Yeah. So it was by members of the uh, the underground. What is it? I forgot that group. But they actually broke him out of jail and took him all the way to Algeria. There was a wow. couple of African American kind of soul on ice uh eldridge cleaver was there as well so some it was part of a kind of the 60s upheaval leary was part okay. of that but it was very strange because he's a lot like Crowley because he had definite intelligence connections uh yeah. he always praised the cia and Crowley himself was probably a lifelong um and he says as much that he was a member of the british intelligence probably from right when he left uh, came why do you think that is like i keep get as more i get into like the occult it has its ties in the intelligence community why is that yeah it's a great question i think that there's a really good book about crowley and his intel stuff called uh, secret agent 666 i can't remember the All author's right, name there's I'll a really, that. I'll get really good book and there's actually interviews by that author a lot of he's been around so uh, he actually okay. discovered some stuff that he was crowley when he was in new york for world war one was definitely in the employ of British intelligence. They called it mm. something different. They changed it to MI5 and 6. But before okay. that, it was known as the Secret Intelligence Service, the SIS. Okay. But uh, I think that the these people who are into the, I mean, we can talk about the U.S. stuff too, but the Bush family <laughs> and their yeah. cult too. But, and then it gets, there's uh. actual tie-ins. I mean, it, it gets kind of disturbing. But um, wow. I think it's because these they don't have the same kind of moral hesitation mm -hmm. that somebody from a different kind of worldview would have mm -hmm. and uh you know the occult is all basically secret knowledge and a lot of these right. i think these secret intelligence guys are like that they have secret knowledge and they kind of keep it to themselves they know stuff about mm -hmm. doing operations and it's very strange because in the english language a lot of the terminology in magic and in intelligence or intelligence groups is similar there's actually weird overlaps because like the, the magicians will say, I'm commencing an operation. And a lot of these intelligence wow. guys say, yeah, operation. Yeah. And the idea of the ghost or, you know, like a spectral thing. It's really weird. So, um, huh. 
yeah so why that why i think that that's really it that's why and i think that that's the attraction to intelligence of people from that kind of background so mm. um also i'm i'm getting i'm like a 101 level of crowleyan knowledge i listen to isaac wise hop a lot so that but i um like so what i also found interesting was like crowley and magic what are those things was that like this was like a, a sigils and movements and phrases and stuff like that like where was this stuff like did he just make this up from the book of the law like how did he get this you know it was very specific i read like two thousand years later they were still doing like the same you know routine or what a seance whatever movements you want to call or whatever right rituals yeah yeah well, I think that like if you you look at like one of his other groups that he became part of and then ran was the Ordo Templi Orientis mm-hmm. that made its claim, which you'd have to check out the true accurate historicity of whether they made this claim. But they would they claimed to go all the way back to the Middle East and Sumerian magical ideas, and so did so does actually the Masons as well. So you see some of that stuff. So you see like. Uh, I think it was Jack D. Lo Mole, Friday the 13th when yeah, he was killed by. Right. So right. these guys all kind of had that same kind of, whether it's true or not, their pretense yeah. that they go all the way back to history. So I think their ideas go back to like cruelly translated Solomon's texts. So Solomon okay. was David's son who became interested in magic. And so he's translating. So they're trying to bring all this stuff back from thousands and thousands of years, the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. Right. So I think that that was integrated into the golden dawn magical system and then cruelly integrated and it just kind of expands and i think even modern magicians are still they may have variations or cultists may have variations on these texts but a lot of them do like the banishing rituals and all the vanishing rituals the pentagram and all that stuff is still right. really there okay. so um from your studies like have you I mean, is this still going? Like, did is this still going on today in the secret societies? Do you think, or is this something like an a, a art that's lost, kind of? Oh, that's a good question. I think that you could probably analogize the occult to Christianity, where there's all kinds of different sects huh. and impressions. But I think that generally, almost all occultists are probably influenced by cruelly by one way or the other, whether they're wow. true devotees. But I think that they all end up going back treating it. I think that's the potency of cruelly as opposed to maybe Masonic people or some of these other occultists that live, maybe Alice Bailey. But it seems like Crowley, yeah. Crowley was much more imp- uh, important to them. Now, who takes up what? Like my, my modern, right. if you read kind of like LaVey or Michael Aquino, oh, to the yeah. Temple of Set, these guys all right. reference Crowley. And even mm-hmm. the uh, Order of Nine Angles, which I've been kind of researching recently, um, they all never. criticize or read Crowley and then go, I'm going to take this or I agree with that or I think it's pretentious. Yeah. So I think that it's still, I think it's current. I really do think And if you look at like Damien Eccles of the West Memphis three, he's Crowley. He like, he said that he was persecuted for his love and knowledge of Aleister Crowley. And that guy, like I said, who who was the West? Could you, because I've like, I've briefly heard that story kind of recently, but I never, before that, I never heard of the West Memphis three. So what happened with that? Well, it's kind of like an old case, so it's not surprising. In 1993, it was um, May 5th, 1993, three young eight-year-old boys were in West Memphis, which is across. It's west. I mean, it got its name because it's west of the Mississippi River across the Mississippi right. from Memphis, Tennessee. So it's kind right. of like a low, lower middle class type of town where these three kids went missing. They found them. Two, they were all hidden underwater in a ditch. And wow. so it was, you know, national news. And on June 3rd, 1995, almost a month later, three people were arrested, Jason Baldwin, Jesse Miss Kelly, and Damien Eccles. And they were tried and all convicted of the crime in 1994, two separate trials. So it was okay. a total of 24 jurors. But really what happened is it became kind of like a well-known thing because of HBO had a documentary team there, mm. Berlinger and Sanofsky, and their first movie was called Paradise Lost, which came out in okay. 1996. But they kind of turned it into a trilogy. And um, I think that's really what changed public perception from that is people got their information about the case from a Hollywood documentary, which right. is never a good idea. It's yeah, just never, like, it never like, works out. Go that <laughs> so they, uh, um, 
And I personally, like, I was like, oh, they're guilty. I didn't think about it. And then they got yeah. out. They were, there was a huge kind of public uh, uh, outcry because they were supposedly okay. railroaded. They were convicted. The story, the cover story or the, the public story was that they were convicted due to their liking black clothing and they were they really weren't the real criminals is the story there's okay. somebody else who did it. so <clears throat> they actually there were raised uh 10 to 20 million dollars so a huge amount of money they got the best lawyers wow. they could get appellate lawyers uh, a guy okay. by the name of dennis reardon who did uh barry bonds's case if you remember that oh, wow into sports yeah so they get the same guy and eventually wow. they they find their way out they kind of just weasel they actually pled guilty again, which is very strange in criminal law that somebody gets convicted twice, but they pled guilty on for first degree murder yeah. and with the best lawyers possible in August of 2011. So they were wow. let out of, yeah. So they were let out of jail. And I think the public opinion is that they were unjustly, you know, put through this punishment 17 years in jail okay. by a bunch of hillbillies in Arkansas who, right were KKK members and Swill right. and Shine or something. The truth of the matter is that the original lower court decisions were affirmed upon appeal by the Supreme Court of Arkansas. So a totally different. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they actually Jesus tried to go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of the United States didn't want to hear the case. Uh, there's all kinds of problems and evidence in the, the, once you start reading the case files, which are available on Callahan, the Callahan 8K website, you see a whole different story side to the case, which is uh, Damien Nichols has a 500 page psych record. Of, wow. of, yeah, and that was actually compiled by his defense team. So it wasn't compiled by the prosecution. It was compiled by the yeah. defense team because they That's were, odd. yeah, it was in a, on appeal. They were trying to appeal his capital murder sentence. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so there's that. And also Jesse, Miss Kelly confessed originally and people have said oh, it was a, it was a bogus confession, but after Jesse, Miss Kelly was, convicted he started saying we did it again and again and again and all of that is in an audio so you can hear these audio tapes so yeah. they're conveniently ignored whenever you see convenient admissions omissions of fact you have to kind of right. sit up straight so my book yeah. my first book abomination was about that case and uh i well, really what made that case so different well, it's different in a lot of ways. So it involves, I think that involves a lot of very inter important themes to understand, which is uh, okay. PR, public relations, how uh -huh. things in court can be different than what they're saying in public. It's about the, it's almost kind of like a mobocracy type thing where this outside huh. force raised tons of money and influenced in court um, dynamics. Right. It's also about Satanism. I mean, it's about occultism because what did, what does Damien Eccles do when he gets out? He starts writing books on magic so he's written like really books. yeah he's written five books on magic and angels and demons and he does his wow. own tarot readings yeah he moved directly to salem um salem massachusetts no, really right out of really? no yeah but because he was sympathetic to the witch trials so he drew wow. a correlation right so he drew a correlation between himself mm -hmm. and being like a. So, I mean i guess there's the public thing that he was supposedly yeah. Uh, unjustly convicted with the witch trials, the Salem witch trials, the infamous <laughs> Salem witch trials, yes. the crucible, which we can get into. Right. There's also some sketchy yeah. stuff about that story, but it's interesting because I followed that. And uh, anyway, there's just so much well, more to the case. What than was the public, like, you know. Yeah. I'm sure there's so, what was like one of the key things that gave like, was this like kind of during the satanic panic thing in America? Well, that's what's brought up. And in there, that case is used as an example of satanic panic. So this is kind of a loaded term, but okay. really what, what piqued my interest in the case was I was looking at a video of, um, of Eccles and they were asking him stuff about Crowley and I had just finished a book on Crowley. Right. So right. I was like, that what's Crowley sense. in this? And so that was yeah. really, that set me off on like, you know, a thousand mile adventure because everybody said that they were innocent. And I'm just, I'm literally scratching my head. Like how are they right. innocent when they're guilty in court? How is this yeah, working? Right. What's an all for right. Lee? What happened there? Why are these documentaries yeah. always? So I had to ask a lot of questions to really kind of get through the propaganda or the public relations, which are very similar to each other. Um, right. But uh, <laughs> that's really what interested me the case. And once I saw that they were, i I'm still convinced they were justly convicted that they're the real um, perpetrators of the crime and the people that they blamed, whether it was one of the stepfathers 
are transparently false. And then, so you're going back like, well, if that's false, that's it. So there's a lot of real problems with the case. Then if you really research it, I think I, really my book in a lot of ways was just a, a core. I mean, nobody until I wrote my book in 2012 had taken the core documents wow. and put a timeline together and said, I will this definitely is exactly check what it happened. out. And uh, being saying that Satanism was involved is not popular at all. They'll call you a witch really? hunter. Yeah. Witch hunter, Christian fundamentalist. Did they, did they like were there found like satanic things around this case though? Like what or well, is that a loaded question as no, well? No, it's not, because there's tons of it. So <laughs> okay. there's all kinds of drawings. There's all there's like a drawing of child mm. sacrifice. There's statements that wow. this guy licks blood. Um, wow. there were okay. meetings at a place they called Stonehenge, which was an old uh cotton gin that had been abandoned. It's covered in pentagrams. They were doing fires. Wow. So yeah, no, there's tons of stuff. There's tons of books on a cult that are involved. There's candle wax at the scene. There's just all okay. kinds of creepy stuff. And yeah, so they, they ignored that. But there was stuff that came into the court case that involved that as well. And I mean, it just wow. goes on tattoos. He had a downward facing pentagram tattoo on his chest, like a like yeah. a like would be a jail tattoo, like somebody did right. real cheap. Um, okay. And that was brought up in court. We'll just, so there's tons. And he uh, had asked for an encyclopedia of witchcraft by a noted author wow. whose name I, yeah, whose name I can't remember right now, but, uh, this kind of sounds like the Franklin count, like, uh, you know, like what was, yeah. I can't remember. Franklin cover up. Uh, yeah. Franklin cover up. Yeah. But I can't remember the kids, the Paul Bonatti or Paul, something like that. He, Paul Bonatti. Came out right. said, yeah. 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 And he said like that there was lots of people when, and this was around the same time, I would think, I think that was a little earlier than that, but, you know, it was around the hoods. 80s, I think, is Bonacci. That's Omaha, Nebraska. So it's not yes. that far from West Memphis. Yeah. 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 No, but I just, it sounds similar to that. So but do you think, like, oh, go ahead. Another theme that's, uh, just, to, just to interject a little bit, another yeah. theme that's yeah, really yeah, is the power of celebrity because the celebrities really were the ones who generated this thing that he was innocent. So all these uh, people, Marilyn okay. Manson, Johnny Depp, Henry yeah. Rollins, Margaret Cho, Dixie Chicks. Wow. Uh, the guy, yeah, the guy from um, Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder. Wow. So all these people, yeah, they were just a huge group saying this is an injustice. So I think that that changed a lot of people's mind without ever looking at the facts of the case. Right. Well, so that, I think I was it, gonna, that's sorry. how they thwarted those lawyers, I'm guessing. Like, was right. Support so, like that. right. Well, yeah. I mean, some these lawyers reared in. I mean, I, my understanding, I can't confirm this, is that Johnny Depp and Peter Jackson of like The Hobbit and – Lord of the Rings okay. trilogy paid the lawyers out of pocket. Wow. Yeah, so they didn't even pull, get it from the pool of money they raised. They literally, wow. were, yeah, big numbers, 50,000 a month, something like that. And do you have a speculate, do you want to speculate why they would do that? Well, I don't need to speculate. <laughs> I mean, if you look into Johnny Depp, man, it's not a pleasant yeah. ride. Look into his right. past, look into his movies, look into yeah. all of his references. Why is he in all these sketchy movies? Sleepy mm. Hollow. Um, uh, it's a what, yeah, really good from film. hell from hell the ninth gate go look at all those movies they're all cool wow movie. yeah no it gets really deep really wow. deep and he was in that grunwald or whatever he plays that guy grindelwald yes or whatever, right Potter, yeah like the big yeah. bad guy yeah he is and jk is rowling big, yeah. yeah jk rowling insisted that he play that role why so there's a really of yeah and even it was after he got that uh i mean i think it was wrong but or alleged the beating case of the his wife i'm pretty sure right right and he still got that role yeah so that's a really so, interesting point i think he got fired from um pirates of pirates of the caribbean yes i think he you're got right. let go yeah. he was conveniently let go it was it was right. a firing but they just put a nice little wrapper on it but uh even that character i've heard is very much kind of plays kind of little kind of a chaos uh um, yeah, he has kind of like a little trickster chaos theme to him himself. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, What's so, your, uh, so Depp is, I think, if you really, there were stories of Depp back in the 90s where he was getting all this magic stuff, like bat swings no from South way. America. Yeah, they busted him, like importing all these wow. weird, yeah, weird stuff. And he hangs out with uh, Hunter S. Thompson, who's hyper sketchy and ties into right. the Franklin cover up. Hunter S. Thompson does? Yeah, he's mentioned in the book. I can't remember the Franklin cover up by. Yeah, I can't I, remember. I've read it, but I can't remember the guy's well, name. Well, there's wrote a, it either. there's a very little sync sequence in there where Bonacci says that he 
uh, some kind of run in with Hunter S. Thompson, some sketchy run in wow. in El- Las Vegas, no less. You know, and Hunter <laughs> S. Thompson's base was in um, Colorado, so not too far out. Wow. Yeah, no, it gets see. Do you think, I mean, is this like the same sack? I always like, I'm try. you know, I don't think anyone has the correct, like a perfect answer, but like the sacrifices of olden times. Do you think that that's like what this theme that keeps coming up? Like clearly they're making contact with something because people wouldn't go through all this to just not be oh. rewarded. Right. Right. I think so. I think, I think they're definitely doing what you would think that some old kind of necromancer or black man right. would do all that stuff. And I do yeah. think if you look, I think that that's one of the par- important aspects of the West Memphis three is really about mind control and how, in a very broad mm-hmm. sense, but how they're able to get this concept across to people without them really questioning anything. It's almost like they repeat these wow. acts. Yeah, no, they repeat these axioms about the West Memphis three, almost like a zombie, like uh, he was convicted for a crime he didn't commit. You'll hear these like same wow. phrases played over and over. Right. Uh, right. It was a, he was a part of satanic panic. So they bring up this little right. term. But I mean, you can, yeah. I mean, the, people That's should be wild. concerned. Yeah, these people's ideas are out there because right, very dangerous ideas. Right, super dangerous. Do you think that? What do you think the purpose? I think you're absolutely right with that. Mind, there's mind control is so tied into like all well, these. Well, just people, to interject like, too, Damien Eccles. Yeah, nobody's please. read this book. Nobody's read this book, but he has made his own pamphlet called Mind Magic with a K. Like you said, no yeah. I was just reading your uh, yeah. Twitter tweet. But yeah, M-A-G-I-C-K, yeah. that book is out there. I've actually looked and said, somebody find that book and send it to me because I want to know what's in it. But he's written yeah. his own book on mind magic. I don't know what he's doing. But wow. he's not. Yeah, it's very strange because, yeah. I mean, I think even on the stand, if you look at the stuff on the stand back in 1994, mm-hmm. they asked him, do you know anything about the cult? And he, his response was, I know everything about the cult. Wow. He said that when he That's was 18. Crazy. When he was 18. Right. Wow. Yeah, no. Then the question is, who's like teaching, you know, who? Well, it's a great question because in the, out. No, because in the court cases, they they were friends with somebody they called Lucifer, which was a nickname no of some way. older person. So you had these wow. young, disaffected trailer park kids right. who really didn't care right. about school. Right. Uh, they, you know, they were just a different, not part of the people going somewhere. So I think that that was really their kind of way to differentiate themselves. You know, he called himself a goth, but it was much deeper than that. And, right. Uh, he's actually right. made it an, an admission in the back of his own movie, which was called West of Memphis. He admits to saying he wants to be the greatest magician that ever lived. That was wow. really, his, yeah, that's really was his thing. And it's been exposed. Like he does, you can go look this up. He has a, he used to call it magic revolution. I don't know what his YouTube channel is now. But um, so he has a that's crazy. No, yeah, no. So he's actually just like a proselytizer. He's teaching people wow. magic. Yeah, to this day, 2020. So he got out in 2011. Right. Um, but it's interesting because he admitted to being in what's called the Astrum Argentum, which was something very specific to Aleister Crowley. It was his mm-hmm. own magical group, but it wasn't structured the way you would think like 11 people get together and chat. Okay. It was meant to be a training a very rigorous training thing for the mm-hmm. occult where you only have one person who guides you and it could be somebody wow. from another place. Like you never meet that person. He has a magical name. He teaches you everything and that's it. So, so Eccles is admitted to being that, but he's also admitted to uh, wow. confirmed to be part of the OTO, which I mentioned earlier. So right. Ordo Templi right. Orientis. Um, yeah. which, and that was from the own literature from Arkansas you can see all the stuff. All my videos wow. are on William Ramsey Investigates. Oh, yeah, it gets super deep. No, it's really disturbing. That's, yeah, that's, so, no, no, but it wow. gets even worse because he has tattoos and links to groups that I don't even think are publicly known. I do believe that they're – Wow. You can't even read about. <laughs> really? That crazy? Yes. Like that high – that secret or that – Yes. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. That wow. whose, whose literature – and organization are are totally like you have to be initiated to understand. Wow, to see that. I truly believe that. Yeah, I don't even. I'll tell you maybe offline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was no, just gonna incredible. say, saying it would would that like even searching that on Google, you think pops up something? 
No, I don't. No, no. Oh, okay. No, 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 it's super. It gets really, it gets really intense. I, I'll tell you something offline. Uh, just through <laughs> my research. Fair. But yeah. it's kind of, it's interesting because the study of the occultism of West Memphis Street Crowley actually ties into my Smiley Feast Killers research. Perfect. There's a weird overlap. So yeah, all my perfect. movies are available on Vimeo. You just okay. have to type in William Ramsey. I think I'm going to have to watch these tonight. So, yeah, so well, there, my first video on the Smiley Face Killings was three and a half hours. So people, I'll, I'll start it's it. Pretty, it's a pretty grueling ride, but it was made in 2017. Okay. And that was so, let's, if you dial it back. So there's this idea that there's this notion of the Smiley Face Killers that was around. It was really promoted by two guys, Gil, Gannon and Gilbertson. Gannon was a police detective in New York City. Gilbertson is a um, criminal, a professor of criminology or something. I don't okay. know the exact title. I think he's All out right. of Minnesota or Wisconsin. All right. They both notice this phenomenon of young men being found in water. So they meet up. To, they don't meet up, but huh. they connect with each other because Gannon has found his cases in New York City, Manhattan area. Gilbertson has found his cases up in the Minnesota, Wisconsin area. Young men disappear. Okay. They started researching. What they found is that there's this symbol that's often close to where these they think, not where the bodies are found, but where they think they're put in water. So it got, okay. this phenomenon got its name, the smiley face killers, from that symbol. Okay. Okay. So from the water. It, right. So water and stuff like that. So then they wrote a book. They studied it. They wrote a book called Case Studies in Forensic Drownings, a very kind of academic criminal forensics type book that detail at least 14 of those cases. So that's really the foundational work of that. It's been supposedly debunked. It's supposedly <laughs> as everything is right. So yeah. they, I mean, honestly, you literally can just say I debunked it and people go, Oh, okay, yeah. well it's debunked. Yeah. You say You're it's debunked. Right. It's, it's kind of like pizza right. gate. I think Podesta yeah. actually used that term in pizza. Gate. Really? Yeah. I literally said <laughs> it's been debunked. I'm like, how can you debunk? Yeah. These uh, Instagram pictures. Yeah, yeah. right. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I actually do a lot of stuff debunking the failed. I call it a section in my second movie called Debunking the Failed Debunkers. So I oh, actually awesome. analyze their, Oh, yeah. No, they, they're, it's terrible. It's, it's, it's horrible. A, yeah. It's an atrocious, shameless amount of like li lacking research. All right. Uh, it's right. almost like this is embarrassing. Like, are you want to take your name off that? Anyway. <laughs> I know, you know, the under interesting thing is nobody ever calls me to debate me. They interview me, but they never want really? to. Really? Yeah. I can't get anybody to do an antagonistic, <laughs> like, debate on any of my subjects. Like, you probably know they can't. They can't win. Well, because the facts yeah. be a lot. Anyway, yeah. Smiley Face Killer. So that was it. So I was studying. I There's actually, if you can dig it up, it's on Coast to Coast. There was an interview okay. uh, by one of these guys. I think it's four hours where they talk about it. All right. There's a lot of different people coming from different angles researching it. I met up with a guy who I think is the most important researcher on it, Jim Smith Online. Smiley okay. Face Cult is what it, the title of his Twitter feed. I highly recommend people right, follow that. Look at it. Follow this because, I mean, the cases are like 100 or 200 worldwide. Wow. So, yeah, no, no, it's really crazy. So, that, yeah. So I really tried to do the research. So in my first book, first one is some smiley face killers who's abducting, torturing, killing a college age men in the U.S. and U.K. That was like the three hour one. Okay. And I covered a lot of U.S. cases, but then the second one's the global slaughter continues because it's happening all over the world, especially Europe, U.K., tons of cases. Really crazy. And they have different terms for it. So in Manchester, they call it the pusher, this phenomenon, because they do find these bodies and canals they have yeah it's really wow yeah no is so, it still going on now absolutely so it died it's weird because it really stopped during the whole pandemic covid for march oh, really and as it's opening up wow. it started up again yeah so they it's had, so like, funny that you said the smiley i remember as like a little kid when i hung out with my one friend we were like so young like probably eight and i remember him saying like i don't know it must have been in the news then i'm born in 1990 he said there's this group that goes around that kills you and they're, they're called the smiley face killers is that something that's like was that was this popular more like years ago or no it might have been. I think that it really, I think that the, the Gannon and Gilbertson got together in the 90s. I think the earliest case was sometime in the, is Kevin McNeil, sometime in the early okay. 90s. So it okay. might have been around. The, the other people, there's tons of researchers, a lot of people, the public will never know. But there's yeah. guys like grinding spreadsheets and putting together dates. Wow. Trying to so correlate it with moon, moon cycles. So the, 
Wow. So what yeah. do you think it's t- so that it has water in most of these situations and what other similar connecting? Well, the symbols and, and Gilbert's and Gannon actually did, which I highly recommend. They did a six part series on oxygen. Okay. And you can see some of the, I think you can see some of the pieces of it, but they were also on Dr. Oz and Phil, Dr. Mm. Phil talking okay. about their findings. But I think that there's, I think it's a mix of things, but it's super dark. It really, and I really? think, that, yeah, and uh, if, yeah, yeah, huh. I think it's also because young men don't consider themselves victims like women do, so they put themselves in difficult positions, mm. situations, or positions. And I, so I think that uh, you really got to watch out if you're at a bar because you could be targeted, and I think that's what the wow. killers are doing, yeah. So, you, and is it, so it's predominantly men, well, this, the, this kind of phenomenon has been tar- you know targeted men it's weird because there's not that many women although they do, it does happen but okay. it's not that many women are found in water like the men have like there's really a serious huh. like connection between all these people and i just go through the cases and i think that if you look through all those cases that are on my movie it's like irrefutable yeah. that something's happening how you define it and why but huh. wow um yeah and it That's ties, really yeah, wild. it gets really deep. I, yeah. I'll have to dig deep and uh, take, take, I've never well, like heard, you know. Well, there's, so it's, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel where William Ramsey investigates. I did a bunch of interviews where I just talked to a bunch of different people from different okay. aspects of it. And uh, you can see all those cases and stuff for free. The first thing I watched was the death of a young guy in Columbus, Ohio. His name was Joey Labute. Okay. I think that was in 2016. And I was like, oh, man, if this guy gets found in water, he disappeared out of a bar. Wow. And I was like, yeah, if this guy gets found in water, I'm going to freak out. And sure enough, 19 yeah. days later, he materialized dead in water in the Seattle River outside of Columbus. Wow. Island. Yeah, no, it was really incredible. And young guy, vibrant, you know. And one of the stories about these cases, and it's easily to debunk the people who think it's not happening, is that nobody sees these people go in the water. There's no splashing. Mm-hmm. Nobody says, I'm going to go for a swim. Mm-hmm. I'll see you guys right, tomorrow. Right. They just right. disappear out of a bar and then materialize. And some of these other cases are incredible because, yeah, it gets really bad. It's clear that these people are being held somewhere for a certain amount of time. Wow. Uh, that they don't die, wow. they, they disappear, yeah. It, this kind of sounds like, like the national park thing, like where people right. go missing it, right? I mean, is there, have you, I'm sure you've yeah. done, you've done so that. Re- like... that guy's name is um, 411, right? Missing 411. Right. Yes, yeah. I can't remember his name. Yeah, I forget uh, his name. name but well. he did write a book on the phenomenon. It's kind of like yeah. called Found in Water or something, which overlaps with the smiley face okay, it does. phenomenon. His books, um, I think they're easy to criticize. And I've talked to that guy, mm. Polita, Politis, Politis. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, it. that's um, it. And I asked him, do you think, I directly asked him, do you think these people are being abducted by Bigfoot? And he didn't even answer me. So... <laughs> He was just willing to kind of keep it a mysterious event. And okay. after that, and I've talked to Jim Smith and my, per- yeah. yeah. So my personal, yeah, I don't really have a high opinion of him. Is my opinion. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that's fair, yeah. man. You're well, very well. I mean, I, so, well, I read his stuff. So yeah. So there's a, definitely a lot of other people looking at, he's one of them, but mm-hmm. I think that if you really distill these cases down to like young men, there's just a lot yeah. of really disturbing things that are happening and uh i mean do you attribute it to paranormal things no, or is it a group no, of a no group of okay i think there might have paranormal interests or but okay. i think it's a huge done yeah. human human right. causation okay human causation for sure wow <laughs> well there's a real kind of like weird thing within the occult about water and mm. spirit and things like that so i think some of these guys really may have that idea that they're yeah they're they're doing bad things i i wouldn't attribute it all to all of these deaths to one thing but clearly okay. something se- like cells like groups of people in right. different locations right. with the same ideas are operating right well clearly it's all over the world because you said they're in europe and right right i mean this and, group has to be but what's surprising too i did a full segment on just the culture of the smiley face that a lot of people don't know but it's in yeah. tons of movies it's placed really? in the symbol, absolutely. So Fight Club, um, Watchmen, all these movies that you know very well, the smiley face is very involved. 
if you remember from Fight Club, when they blow up that building, they just put a huge smiley yeah. face on the side of it. It's not there by mistake. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, yeah, you got to watch it. Wow. Movie. Yeah, yeah. That, no. yeah. When, when you, when you wow. see the breadth and depth of it, you'll freak out. And I actually think that Alan Moore, who's a known practicing magician, is putting uh, these occult ideas into his, um, into his work. So I think the Watchmen functions not just as a story, but there are kind of like, mm. you would call it almost like a learning fable, symbols and fables. In right. his work. And even Palniak and Fight Club and all this stuff. If you read these books, no, man, it's, wow. Oh, it's a mind blower. Yeah. That is wild. But yeah, no, it gets really bad because the smiley face is everywhere. It's in like, if you watch The Stand by Stephen King. Um, okay. It's just tons. And even clothing has the smiley face. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, so you think this is like a sigil or something? Yes. A calling card or no something question. like that? Yes. Yeah. Wow. No, wow. it gets deep. Yeah, it gets deep. But the, the thing is, is that people from a criminologist, I think this is my opinion, from a criminologist, they're thinking that nobody would have ideas different than their own. Mm -hmm. And I think the perpetrators of these crimes right. have the idea, an ideology that they cannot even comprehend wow yeah yeah and they caught a guy i mean there's an incredible case i use it in my it actually happened at the beginning of this year huh um it happened in michigan and it was a guy by the name of katunsky who and there, there's a correlation between this and like gay apps uh gay it's in certain cases okay like right. grinder and stuff like that right but right. The, he he took some guy and and was on Grinder. The guy didn't. He's, you can remember his name because his name was Kevin Bacon, like the actor. Wow, yeah. And literally, yeah. the actor Kevin Bacon got involved in the case because what? of the. Yeah, no, it's totally crazy. So look up <laughs> Katunsky, K A T U N S K I, okay. outside of uh, Michigan, and he had a freaking. I mean, I don't even want. Yeah, he had a dungeon. Oh, uh, like horrible, gruesome yeah, things. Yeah, like the like saw. Saw wow stuff. wow yeah and th this is just one person that he caught and right. he, he's like yeah so i i did a study on gay serial killers there was a couple really good books okay which, um there's a guy mcdonough who talked about they called i can't forget he had like 100 victims he had, wow. it was incredible yeah and then there was another one the the serial killer was eiler her name is Colerick. And he was really smart. He was a he was attracted to men, but he right. would move between jurisdictions. And that book, I think it was called Free to Kill by Kolderick. It was the one book they found that book in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. When oh, they arrested wow. Him. Yeah. It sounds like I mean, I know we're like speaking of like are these coincidences? No. Like no. no? Okay. Well, like that's why it can't be like at a certain point, right? I mean it's like it has to be I don't know. I mean, it's a simple, I mean, if you have that ideology or that world outlook, you're going to be attracted to things with that same outlook or that same mm -hmm. event. So I think right. that people who are interested in things, they're reaching out there on the dark web, they're communicating, right. um, they're using mm. encrypted right. apps, they're using encrypted right. type things like Telegram, I think is one. Yeah. EGP Telegram, yeah. keys and things like that. It's not believable, but they're very secretive and uh, they caught a, yeah. <laughs> So, so what came, it's really a unique environment in this world because the internet makes communication of very subgroups of subgroups allowable. So if right. you have a weird fetish or right. yeah. pedophile or, yeah, I mean, you, on the, it just gets, I mean, there's just horror shows of dark web things, people things being filmed like in Philippines Right. And they had this story in the Ukraine things. where, yeah, or Yao of God was literally creating babies for sale. Like wow. he was selling babies. Right. This was a guy who was with Oprah, right? Oprah, right. Yeah. Oprah was, a, was an advocate. It's not believable. People don't know how depraved that guy was. Yeah. There was something they found out where these Chinese, I mean, it gets sick. They were online. They were baby farming kids in Ukraine so they could rape them, so they could try Wow. Them. Yeah. Wow. How sick is that? It's sick. It's great. Yeah. It's like Bro, this whole underworld. Yeah, whole underworld. And they I've had friends of mine who speculated that these smiley face killings may be somebody flying in from out of town or some wow. other jurisdiction right. committing the crime and leading. Right. So right. the case right. I told you about earlier about Joey Labute, he disappeared. 
during the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic, the biggest right. event in Columbus, Ohio. Bodybuilding class. Right, yeah. bodybuilding class. All these dudes yeah. are in town. They're yeah. probably on roids. Yeah. The guy was in, he was homosexual. He was in a gay bar. Uh huh. You know, I don't, oh, wow. I don't want to speculate. They, that right. guy, I'm 100% convinced, was murdered. Like he did wow. not walk to the CO2 and drown. Right, right. So it well, gets really sketchy. A lot of these people, they have these, uh, you know, they're supposedly surveillance videos. They never work. It's just like, mm. it strains credulity. Wow. Like, oh. So right. there's speculation about like the bartenders or the bouncers mm. and oh, yeah. So there's another one, Zach Marr out of Boston. You can just, yeah. these cases are just unbelievable. And it's strange right. too that these, they have never really put them together in one group. Like, Nobody else can see the correlation, but once you see the group together, you see the same MO disappeared out of a bar, missing yeah. for a long period of time, found in water, found. in pre-searched areas, like massive search parties, right? Not right. like John disappeared. It's like dad comes into town, gets 400 people to go and pamphlet right. and send out missing signs all over town, right. never find them. And then all of a sudden, three weeks later, bam. Wow. So it's a real tragedy too, because the live well, watch had the misfortune of seeing the families who lost a loved one. And it's, just, it's a horror show. This way, especially. Yeah. yeah. A mystery. Yeah. The cops are like twiddling their thumbs. Right. The cops are saying, oh yeah, he accidentally drowned. Well, how do you prove he's accidentally drowned? Well, we just right. found him in water, so he must have accidentally drowned. Right. Okay. Right. Well, um, you know, yeah, and they've actually had case. There was a guy named Chris Jenkins out of Minnesota where they initially said he was accidentally drowned. The mom got involved. Wrote a book. Um, wow. I think it's Footprints at the Water's Edge or something. Mm -hmm. They figured out something's going on. They found Chris Jenkins. He has a clump of hair in his hand. Mm. They don't know. Like, he's even more suspicious. And right. he's dead. And then the police actually went back and said he died by either murder or misadventure. They changed the case wow. after they went back and looked. Yeah, it gets really screwed up. So, like, Chris McNeil was the same thing. He was a Fordham student in New York City. He was at a bar in Manhattan. People saw him come out. He was puking. A car was following him. He's found in water. His parents tell, get told he's accidentally drowned. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. They just go, we have had a tragic loss. The parents asked for his autopsy. His autopsy. Wow. Yeah, so they get the autopsy. They found the guy's been hit in the head with like a pickaxe. And he was, he was blowtorched on the upper part of his body. Like, now that you so, say this water, so, like in no, college... Get this, yeah. bro. It gets even worse because there's probably tons of people out here who have come close to being abducted or murdered. Right. I don't even know what happened. Right. But they had actually Cyril Wecht, who's probably one of the most well-known authoritative forensic examiners with integrity, okay. looked at the case and the autopsy file for the parents mm -hmm. and said, this guy was tortured. He's wow. tortured. Come on. He's been burned with a blowtorch. Wow. So, yeah. So, so there's guys in there with very dark, very evil impulses and desires and that's what i think some of these cases really are not all of them but but you attribute it more to the occult side than like a psycho a sociopathic side or is that one and the same are they connected it gets really deep so you have to kind of watch the documentary but the really the basis okay. if you look at the cover of my documentary it's a guy he's in like a gimp mask with mm -hmm. water being shoved in his mouth and it comes from a video of nine inch nails called broken. Do you remember right. that? Or are you familiar with that? I know all? nine inch nails, but okay. I wasn't so they put out this video by this guy um, and it's super dark, but I'm watching the video going, this is exactly like the MO of these types of murders. Somebody's driving around the car, finds a young wow. man, gets tortured and they put water down his throat to drown wow. it. So he's not even in, in like a body of water. Right. He's in a freaking right. like bathroom or something. Right. So then I figured out who's the guy who directed this video. His name is okay. Peter Christofferson, and he's directed tons of other videos. He's directed okay. 50 other videos, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, but he's in a band that traveled around called, well, he was part of something called Psychic Youth but I, or Psychic TV, which is an occult-oriented group. Okay. But okay. He, the band was called Throbbing Gristle. And I'm okay. researching this guy. Of, oh, lo and behold, he's like a Crowley lover. He's got actual... <laughs> There's videos of him in his house wow. with actual artwork by Crowley. Wow. So not copies of artwork. Right. But the actual, like he wow. went out and they're scanning him and they're talking about Crowley. And I'm like, 
what is going on? What are these guys right. up to? He's a member of the Illuminates of Thanateros. Thanateros is like uh, sex and death, something okay. Leary was part of. It just gets so crazy and deep. But yeah. I think that these guys are so this overlapping thing of the and he was a homosexual. Okay. So you see this occultism in that. So I, like I said, subset of subsets of, of yeah. culture. I think that there, it's out there. And so, Where and do so you... I covered all these guys. There was this guy out of Manchester. His name was Sanaga. And uh, he was t- doing the same thing. Trolling yeah. for men late at night, drugging them. And they think he was the most successful rapist in British wow. history. Wow. They don't know how many people are raped. But that's oh all they God. had on him. Like, what if he took one or two of those people and threw them in water? Yeah, you but they never found out. Right. Right. So right. I, I don't know. So, you know, these guys are hanging on and you would look at this guy Sanaga and you go, Oh, he's just a he's just a mild mannered student. He was a student uh-huh. at one of these universities and he went to church. He went to some like John hmm. of Christodom church. So he had this kind of cover, but at night he was like a pre- super predator. You'd invite hmm. people back, drug them and rape them. So I don't know how That's... I got this. So going back to your no, point, yeah. so the overlap between this this <laughs> phenomenon and occultism yeah. can be yeah. found no doubt okay where do you so i tried to figure this out to myself like southern california seems to be like a hotbed of this acti- activity would you agree with that or no there's definitely cases here there's been a few cases of mysterious there's a guy named van zant out of hermosa beach they never found his body but he disappeared but there's he, a lot of cases in california there's some outside of la but there's cases in definitely tons of hot spot in portland um, mm, that's interesting. Uh, San Francisco, some in Vancouver, Seattle, okay. but they're even in the Midwest. There's a lot in Indiana, definitely Chicago, New York City, college towns. I just, I just didn't know, a, like, did did this, like, I mean, the occult kind of behavior in general, like, did it start in East and then move like uh, into Hollywood? Like, what came first, like this uh, Hollywood or like the occult aspect of Hollywood? Occult. Does that I make the, sense? I think the occult. Yeah. Okay. I All think. Right. I think that um, it's. I think that for people who aren't into the occult, they'd be surprised how many people are into different variations mm-hmm. of the occult. It's interesting. Um, I would say even now, like in LA, the predominant religion is rich, witchcraft for young girls. Really? It's not yeah. Really? So yeah, it's bad. So um, yeah, I think that the the kind of ideas. I mean, something has happened also with the advent of the internet, where you okay. didn't have those strictures of space and time right where somebody had to travel somewhere or you had to send a book you can literally read all of crowley's material online pretty much uh but also other occult groups i mean we can get into the order of nine angles that really didn't exist until 1980 and really was never ever yeah no and now there's just murder there was this guy in toronto who killed and slit some dude's throat and mm-hmm. he was doing Order of Nine Angles Chance, which is something you probably only get that literature through the internet. There was another okay. guy named Meltzer that they arrested earlier this year that was plotting to have an attack done against his his own U.S. unit that was moving to Turkey. Wow. Yeah, and it's in the same jurisdiction as Maxwell, Epstein, Weinstein. So you can look up Ethan Meltzer. So these cases, okay. these occult influence crime, and it's like one of the biggest jokes in the world is that the FBI... Uh, tried to it's called the landing report and they tried to poo poo or downplay occult influences in crime and it's just it's right. just not true i'm not saying all maybe from right. a religious perspective if you're a bible believing christian right. maybe yeah. all crime is really influenced by the occult yeah or occult and not connection. literally right, right. but yeah. um they're, these guys are definitely doing it for occult reasons. This guy, Von Nutigem, you got to look him up in Toronto. It's off the charts. I wrote a, I wrote a, uh, my website is William Ramsey investigates. Mm-hmm. And I put up a lot of my old articles and some of the newer articles I'm writing about the order of nine angles. It's bad, man. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. It's and really dang, super dangerous, really ba- dangerous ideas. What do you think? So what's like, uh, I'm trying to think like, I want to ask, I guess, who gets involved? Like, what do you think is happening with this spells? Like, what is the benefit that they get besides, you know, like when we pray, I mean, say what you will, but I don't have anyone speaking back to me. Right. So if I was committing these heinous crimes for the same feeling that a prayer would give, you know what I mean? Like, what right. are they getting out of this? Cause they have, they can't all be just 
I mean, I guess they could, but there has to be some reward that they're getting from this. Right. right? So well, you look at Crowley's magic in theory and practice. If you're sacrificed, you're trying to get some reward. Mm-hmm. And Crowley goes into history of sacrifice and ends up at the ideal sacrifice as a young male child of perfect innocence, like an eight-year-old child. Wow. Right? So that who dies at, in West Memphis 3? Eight-year-old children. Wow. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's magic in theory and practice. That's so that, crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I actually wrote a recent article, Crowley and Sacrifice, which you can read from my website. Okay. Where I just show how much actual human sacrifice is in Crowley's literature that people who don't, aren't familiar with that don't know about. Because he mentions it in The mm. World's Tragedy, Liber 66, which is one of his religious texts. Okay. Um, which you're supposed to like, you know, do a ritual. But uh, I do believe they think, I, they must think they're getting some type of benefit from Satan or demons. Like they literally right. worship demons and yeah. they want some type of benefit from them. And so that's why it's just, I think, you know, if you look at some of these actions, like if you look at, uh, oh, what's the name of those? Uh, Son of Sam murders, where these people mm-hmm. are shot. Right. These are kind of like sacrificial, where they're trying to obtain benefits and cause fear and cause destruction just for that right. reason, you know? So right. it may not be like, you're sacrificing somebody on a big wooden, you know, thing. Right. I think they right. function as sacrifice. So I think that it depends where, what ideology they're really doing, but I think that they expect some type of evil benefit from evil forces okay. is why they commit sacrifices. Yeah. All right. And it ties, so, ties back even to ancient history where different mm, cultures are killing people, whether it's right, the Aztecs, right, whether right, in the Old yes. Testament they're talking yes. about, um, what is it? What's the man, not mammon? What's the name of the god? Uh, oh, so like they're sacrificing Moloch their kids to Moloch, right? Or even if you look at uh, Carthage, right? Carthage had this huge thing right. of like killing kids. So, right, it's part of you're human right culture. Is, certain yeah. parts of human culture, and that's really yeah. why the Spanish really destroyed the Aztecs in total. Is a lot of there was a lot of cultural elements. It wasn't pure greed, but they're like. Mm-hmm. You guys are killing people and ripping their hearts out in big temples yeah. of these dark, dark demon gods. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Last, like, I so you, I, you mentioned Bush and the occult with the Bush family. Can you, like, touch on that a little bit? Because well, I remember. Okay. But, go well, it goes back to the beginning. It goes back to Prophet of Evil, right? So the events of okay. September happen on September 11th, right? 9-11. Right. A date 11 years before that, George Bush Sr. made a very – important new world order speech on september 11th 1990 so it just really? showed yeah it's an incredible correlation and real power but he's using so crowley's really ideal number was the number 11 it's mentioned okay. in the book of the law it's mentioned in a lot of things it's it's a number that it's really the number of magic but it's also to crowley it was the number of, to the new world order or to the new aeon so he would use mm-hmm. the term aeon which is more of a cosmological change instead of you know, something. So like you literally go through another cycle of 2000 years. So I he's see. trying to bring okay. this era of magic in. Okay. So 11 is very important to Crowley. Pops up okay. all the time. So you got to keep it out there. Now. So then what happens in Crowley, what happens in 9-11? If you look at it as a mega ritual or like black magic, mm. fly, fly at 11, 93, which is Crowley's number, 77, wow. which is Crowley's number, wow, 175, man. right, yeah. So you can see, and even the, even the buildings themselves are a big 11, right? Right, a big 11, so it's yes. a bit, You can see that, but it's actually, it's, and even Crowley talks about the numbers being Holy an, ideo, an ideogram. So the 11 itself is even two things which are the op- opposites, right? Right. So in a lot of magical ideas, you're bringing, it's almost, it's actually very similar to uh, ideas from philosophy, which apparently wow. were brought from magic, which is the whole idea of synthesizing thing, right? Okay. He's this antithesis, antithesis, synthesis. So the 11 wow. itself and that magical thing and their, their ideas. I'm not a magician. I'm a Christian. Right. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't promote magic or the, you know, right. I, no, I believe yeah. you should communicate with demons or Satan. Right. <laughs> it's a really bad idea. Yeah. Because you lose your life yeah. and your soul. Right. Yeah. So absolutely. anyway, ideogram fusion together. So everything leading up to 9-11, that date, I think for occultists was very important because I think even George Bush was trying to create a new world order, a new age. Wow. Right. Wow. So that's why, so you see that as like a 
a point, and it ties actually kind of ties back to Kubrick and Arthur C. Really? Clarke. Yeah, because they actually wrote 2001. They had this monolith in there that's 11 ah. feet tall. The monolith wow. is 11 feet tall. Right. So you, yeah, you, uh, you got to watch. You, you should watch uh, *Prophet of Evil* the documentary because it All has right, a lot I'll of check visuals. That out. No, so these, yeah, thank God George Bush Sr.'s dead, but he was, I mean, uh, George Bush Jr. said, my dad is a god, which ties into the wow. whole Crowley idea of man being god. So anyway, getting huh. to Crow, Crowley and the Bush family. <clears throat> yeah. Crowley gets kicked out of Italy um, in 1923 or four, by, literally by right. Mussolini, yes. right? By Mussolini, literally, yes. Yeah, so yes. he gets kicked out. He goes back to France. He's constantly in France. France is the cultural hub of the really kind of the western world at that time interwar right. um they call it the golden age or the gilded age or something yes. like that so yeah. hemingway right. and all right. of these wealthy Picasso, people all those all right. people were there yeah everybody from the elites from the u.s are all sending their kids or they themselves to go be in that culture right all right art literature yeah just everything was really before yeah. pre-war and so crowley's there <clears throat> so we know that Barbara Bush's mom was there and she was friends with friends that Crowley knew. So one of Crowley's friends was a guy by the name of Harris, who was, I think for a time, the editor of Vanity Fair. So he had known Frank Harris. His name is Frank Harris. Look at that. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's really gets deep. So Harris was also kind of like a libertine and I think they would call him a free thinker right now, which means, you know, not, not a moral type of person. Right. So he and Crowley's together. So her name is, um, I can't remember her maiden name. It, it will come to me. It's, P- uh, Pierce? Uh, yeah. So her first name, Pierce. Right. But so she's supposedly there. Crowley's doing something called ECL, which requires these servitors to base it. I mean, it gets really gravity. You're trying. <laughs> anyway, you need to. <laughs> it's, it's, it's called erato comatose lucidity is what okay. Crowley called it. So you basically have a lot of sex. So she's okay. supposedly involved in that through Harris's girlfriend, whose name is O'Hara. So Harris okay. O'Hara and she's friends. So she, see. it's interesting because even when Crowley is in New York City, he's hanging out and associating with the elite who are interested in the occult at that time. Wow. So you can see this correlation. Right. So he's right. doing something called the Jurensis working and all this other stuff that's happening in New York City in Manhattan. So yeah. it's literally kind of weird because very close to where the tri- Twin Towers were. Anyway. Wow. Look right. No, but the time, no, the timing of Barbara Bush and her mom being in yeah. France and Crowley. And if you look wow, at Crowley's man. lifestyle, he literally didn't mind having children. So at the end of his life, he actually sired a kid called Atatürk. Some woman came to him and he's like, he died when he was, I think, 72. Yeah. He's like relatively. 69. So he had a kid. Right. When he was 69 he just didn't care so <clears throat> the timing is right and if you look at george barbara bush she looks like crowley crowley was a You're right he's actually irish so he kind of had this kind of blocky big head which he uh-huh. tried to dis- disguise by wearing a lot of scarves and stuff like that but he, was wow. a, he had a big wow. head. and if you look at barbara bush and put them ne- next to each other yeah so i'm not right. going as far as saying that that's his daughter but if you right. look at George Bush Jr. and you yeah. look at the elite, they're very Brahmin, upper class. The Bushes right. are super, they come from a super wealthy family, Yaleys. Yes. And they play yeah. like they're from Texas and cutting shrubs and that whole right. fake. George yeah. Bush Jr. has a fake Southern accent. It's not real. Right. It's totally right. fake. Yeah. Um, no, they so, moved there later in life. Right. So, yeah, they didn't, I don't, I don't even think George Bush Jr., Junior was born in Texas. I have to go back and look. No, at that. I think Connecticut. Yeah, I think I'm they're pretty Connecticut. sure. Connecticut. So, yeah. Um, and you just see the dad. They, they're all, that whole family is either Bohemian Grove, Skull and Bones. Right. They're not all churchgoers. They're not going no. to. And uh, well, they I know there's fun a, Planned Parenthood, the, uh, the older no, one. You yeah. couldn't think any, everything that they just support anything that's evil and making yeah. money. So, all kinds of, yeah. So anyway, so that's the correlation between that family and what happened. Okay. And, and actually, really believe a lot of people don't know this, but the Bushes are actually a front for the Rock David Rockefeller, and so what? was Cheney. Yeah, oh my absolutely. God. I need to hear this. Okay. Well, have you ever seen the conversation between David Rockefeller and Dick Cheney? 
I don't believe so. No, seven, it's no. amazing. They're log rolling. The, uh, Dick Cheney is giving us – who went to Yale, ended up at Yale. Right. Dick Cheney is giving a speech, and David Rockefeller pops up and – and starts asking him questions and the, the see it gets really good council on foreign relations is a david right. rockefeller front so right. it was all yes. his way to influence directly influence politics fabian right. socialism this kind of fabianism right. incremental change yes. it gets really deep yeah <clears throat> yeah and chase bank is actually the rockefeller family bank. right so right. when you have the huge bank shake up in 2008 yes. guess who comes out on top Wow. Peace Bank. Yeah, go look. It didn't happen by mistake. Didn't right. happen by mistake. So, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's almost kind of like some of these uh, funds, the TARP funds and stuff went to select groups. So, Sir Goldman Sachs survived. Bear mm-hmm. Stearns didn't. People who got right. the money. It was like a huge financial war. And I think the wow. public was so shell-shocked at them losing their house by the downfall. They just didn't see the larger right. stratagems that were going along. The Bush... The Bush I don't think I would say a very small proportion of society understands what happened, the true nature of what really happened during the Bush administration from 2001 to 2008. It was all intentional. They intentionally collapsed the economy in 2008. They knew that was going to happen. The deregulation was going to add, and it's, it was perfectly played because it was played right as judge George Bush left office. Yeah. It wasn't a mistake. And so they left Obama, just a big pile of horse manure and they had to figure it out. They were panicked. Wow. Yeah. So, oh no. Anyway, man. So, we, if you want to talk about Cruelly and Bush, secret libraries, all kinds of weird stuff, weird correlations and friends, dates are strange. No, that's awesome. And you can look up a lot of the secret, excuse me, like yeah. a lot of these bombings that happened, these fake terror events happened yeah. on numerically important dates. Wow. So, you see wow. 8877, the London bombing. Wow. Seventy seven. Yeah, no, it's a part, no, yeah, no. It goes it gets really bad. There were dates in the these strange bombings that happened in Bali. So okay. it was yeah, oh no. Last last question here. What what's gonna happen next? You're so well versed. You see, like I don't I try to look at your Twitter if you're like I don't know if you're like a Trump supporter or what, but what well, do you think? I would say Trump is the right choice, I think. I I don't okay. think of the yeah. right choices. Don't don't yeah. get me wrong. Right. Um, but Biden is a 47 year old, super corrupt. He's actually making decisions that screw over all Americans. It's incredible that anybody would right. support him. He's taking right. bribes to, to take all of your industrial capacity and send it to China. He's right. obviously doing right. things that are treasonous. Right. So and, uh, you, the, the fact that even the left would defend him is indefensible. No, it's incredible absolutely. that anybody, it's would. Crazy. and uh, Trump is no saint. Don't get me wrong, but at least he's trying to put, you know, people back to work and create right. an economy. I think the Bidens are just in it for themselves and their son is a total freak. I mean, he's <laughs> literally yeah. had meth teeth. Like he literally right. did so much meth right. that his teeth rotted out and he had to have fake right. covers. Do like you he's see not a crackhead. Us... He's worse than a crackhead. Right. He's a method. Right. Sorry. <laughs> do you see us getting out of, like, do you see, because I hear like, you know, people are always like, trust the plan and all those things. Do you see the world changing to become a better place or are we going to, it's got to get worse before it gets better. Well, that's a tough question. I think that a lot, I actually think Q is a really skilled, like uh, psyop. I don't think that Mm -hmm. there's any merit to even following anything with that. So trust the right. It hasn't really (laughs) come true. No, I don't think there things in there and it's kind of fake Christianity too. Yes. So I do think that. that you can elicit or make change through knowledge. So I think if people understand really what's going on behind the curtain, I do believe we're all living in the Wizard of Oz and we really mm-hmm. don't know totally what has happened. I mean, just like I said about the right. Bush, they don't really know the totality. It was all hidden. All the paperwork right, right. was was burned. Um, mm-hmm. We don't see what's happening in Iraq. You know, we, we're, we're kept in a kind of a nice bubble. But I right. think that people, and you can see this in big tech, they don't want you to know anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so absolutely right. I think that... Uh, being nimble and moving away from certain things is good, but being Mm. uh, informed. And I don't, I mean, I think that if Biden wins, it'll be a disaster for the country. I think if Trump wins, it's still going to be destabilization and riots. I I just, uh, I I just don't, I don't have really a great prognosis for the future, to be honest Mm. with you, considering everything. And I think that you just had this kind of breakdown, like 
something has happened with Americans where they've, and I think it's because of the political parties where they're just kind of like lost their moral yeah. principles, yeah. like the principles of, and I think that that's a tremendous I loss where we're just thinking of each other from Democrat exactly. or Republican. So yeah. I got rid of my party affiliation. I actually no, had the stupid idea that Republicans were the best people for the constitution. <laughs> I would call myself an original capital L liberal, but I don't think yeah. you can call the left liberal accurately. No. They might no. have been, but they're actually yeah. super right now. Parties change. People change. Everything's in flux. Yeah. I would say right now, the left is the most illiberal group out there. Yeah. They're, right. They have, they're super thin skinned. They're pernicious. Yeah. They will Absolutely. persecute you. Um, yeah. They're right. They're the ones doing Absolutely. the violence. I think the right is actually dangerous, but the left is much more dangerous right now. Yeah. With Antifa and the breakdown of basic law and order. And I think yeah. that's really yeah. the problem. So if you ask me, no, well, I pre- they're not good, but I think that <laughs> I, I don't think a socialism or creeping socialism or communism is good. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a capitalist either. I would say I'm a free market, less mm. fair person. Yeah. Which means that I don't, I mean, you should go back to the gold standard. And just, right. Yeah, absolutely. They should. Yeah. Absolutely. They never should have left that. Yeah. That's actually funny because Nixon is kind of like a Prescott Bush front man too. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, if you ever, and there's I a could... really good picture. If you look at the family of secrets, I can't remember the yeah. author right now, but there's a really good picture of there. Prescott Bush is a big, tall guy, like six feet. Yes. And yes. he's literally he putting his hand on Nixon's hat, like a little lap dog. It's incredible. Wow. He's just invading his body space and Nixon is smiling at him. Oh, wow. Prescott Bush is incredible, man. He's evil too. But So where can everyone find you? Well, I love um, it. I could keep talking to you forever, but where can, how can they support you and where can they find you, all that stuff? Well, the best thing is to look at my documentaries. On They're on Vimeo now. They may not be in the future, but there's five videos. No, I'm going to check those out. I did Occult Hollywood, Prophet of Evil, Children of the Beast, Smiley Face Killers 1 and 2. And I have three books on Amazon, um, which you can read if you're a reader. And yeah. uh, my website is William Ramsey Investigates. You can see what I've been writing and kind of researching recently. So, Awesome. No, I will check the, I'll put all the links in the show and you have a good, I really appreciate you. I'd love to have you on again. So, anytime, man. Let me know. All right, dude. I'll, I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You too.